So we're outside here in Chinatown. There's downtown there. But here in Chinatown at a little market we like to go to. So yeah, getting some stuff. Hi guys, it's Noe, back in the kitchen cooking with Noe today. Um, today I am going to show you how I make my meatloaf. Um, I've been craving meatloaf, Herschel's been craving meatloaf, and it's been a while since I made it, and so I figured since I was going to make it, I might as well make a video out of it. So, here we go. Uh, so I've got everything prepared here. Um, so I've got about two and a half pounds of ground beef. You really can... Um, I, a lot of these things, it's good because you can, depending on the size of people you're trying to feed, like if you're trying to just feed yourself or feed a family like us, um, well we're a family of five but I'm only feeding four, um, or you know, however you can kind of vary the ingredients. So you'll see that I'm not really measuring a whole lot of things because that's kind of the way I cook, but I'll try to put some basic information um, in, this, in the description box below. So got about two and a half pounds of ground beef. Um, I chopped up about a quarter of a um, of a green pepper, and then I also chopped up um, about a quarter of a white onion as well. I have a couple of slices of bread that I'm going to put into it. I've got my breadcrumbs. Um, you can use crackers. You can use all bread. You can use all breadcrumbs. It's really just dependent on how you like it. Um, I've also made it with oats before, um, so it's just like that binding agent and um, that carb uh, to kind of help bind everything and to make it heartier. So, and then because I'm using a lot of meat, I'm going to use two eggs today. Then I have my ketchup, and I also have salt and pepper. So I have my meat. I'm going to go ahead and crack my eggs. This is nice too because it's actually morning time, but I'm making this and I'm just going to store it in the refrigerator um, in the dish I'll bake it in. And um, that way when it's dinner time or when it's close to dinner time, I can pop it in the oven. Now, since I'm making this ahead and I'm not using like a foil, um, like a, a, a foil pan, I'm using a glass dish, I will want to make sure that I do not preheat the oven um, because it will be stored in the refrigerator. So I don't want a uh, cracked dish. I'm going to go ahead and add my salt into. Um, this is really just up to you to season to taste. Um, but because I have a lot of meat here, I'm going to heavily season it. Salt, some pepper, not too much pepper because um, who I'm cooking for isn't a big pepper fan. So then I'm going to toss in my peppers and my onions. And again, those were like, you know, pretty finely diced. And I'm going to toss in my breadcrumbs. So, probably, I'll probably add more, but, so this is 15 ounces, um, one serving is about a fourth of a cup, I probably used about a cup, maybe a cup and a half, but then I'm also going to add some bread, and I'm just going to tear this up, um, so that way in the loaf you get some bigger pieces, so, yeah. But meatloaf is one of those things, if you're a meat eater, um, I know I've had some requests for uh, vegetarian meals. Um, it's hard because a lot of times, I mean, I make sides and stuff, but that's not a lot of, it's usually just like vegetables. Um, so I am trying to come up with some vegetarian things. I am actually going to make uh, potato soup and do a video on that because that is like comfort in a bowl. <laughs> Um, and it's awesome. And actually, we're starting to get cooler temps here in Seattle. So um, this week it's going to be some days in the 60s. Uh, it's funny because the leaves have already started to change around here, um, which is a little weird because it's still August. But um, so yeah, that's kind of what my mishmash looks like so far. And then I take my ketchup and meatloaf is fun because it's kind of like playing mad scientist a little bit because. 
there's not really an exact science and that's kind of what I like about cooking um, rather than baking. I will say that I, I love to bake um, because I, I love, I have a sweet tooth. All of my teeth are sweet teeth, I think. Um, and I love the results of baking, but baking is very scientific. So you have to have all the right ingredients um, measured out, you know, your baking soda, your baking powder, all of that in order for it to come together. But with cooking, it's much less scientific and much more, well, scientific as in precise, but it's much more experimental. Um, and that's what I like about cooking because if you know what you like, the flavors and everything, then you can blend all that together and create your own masterpiece. Or you can follow along for somebody else's masterpiece and create theirs um, with a recipe. So I don't know. That's why I like. That's why I like cooking. Um, it's kind of like a, you know, you're the 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 witch over the cauldron. Yeah. Okay. So I can already tell that. I'm going to need a lot more breadcrumbs, and I'm probably going to need to add another slice of bread or two, but I'm going to go ahead and dump the whole thing in. Um, again, I am making this bigger because, um, one, I want to be able to have leftovers, and I'll add more ketchup. Leftover meatloaf is great. Some people make meatloaf sandwiches from it, um, or like open-faced sandwiches with the leftovers, but I just like to, to make it. I'm going to make um, homemade mashed potatoes with this as well, because nothing beats homemade mashed potatoes. Like, um, I love homemade mashed potatoes. A little bit lumpy, but also creamy, and all of that. So, um, And then I'm probably either going to roast some carrots with this, or I will make some steamed broccoli, one or the other. I have both, um, and I wasn't sure what I'd be feeling when I made this. So the other thing is um, I can do some with a spoon, but as you've seen in some of my other cooking videos, I like to get one with my food, get a little down and dirty. Um, so my hands are clean, but I'm going to hand mix as well because Sometimes that's just the best way of getting everything mixed together. If you're not into this, uh, you can probably wear gloves or continue to use your spoon. Um, but this works for me. All right. I actually think this is going to be loafy <laughs> enough, if that's a word. I'm making it a word. Um, because it's looking pretty good. It's not like I see a whole bunch of beef that's not mixed with stuff. This is going to be quite the loaf. Um, Alright, I think that's good and mixed. So now I have my pan. I don't need to grease it or anything because the natural grease from the meat will help it. It doesn't really stick, but I'm just going to... Oh, and see, I can see that I have some on the bottom that didn't get quite mixed in. And just empty the bowl out in here. Yep. Oh, this is going to be a good one. All right. And then you just put it in your pan and you form it into the shape of the loaf that you want. Um, I always like to leave room around the edges. So, um you know, the grease and juice and stuff kind of gathers around there and it doesn't stick to the sides either. So you can see that it's, well, I'll show it to you, but it's nice and peppered with the onions and the green pepper throughout. Um, you know, what other, whatever flavors you like, this is kind of how I've always had my meatloaf and I've always made it with peppers and onions. Um, but I'm sure you can throw in other things. You could add garlic if you like. Um, that would be good. I have seen some people like cover theirs in bacon or wrap it in bacon. Um, my mom used to make it that way when I was much younger. Um, but the bacon is kind of gross because the bacon is kind of gross because it doesn't get crispy on top. But so I don't use bacon on mine. 
uh, nothing like that. But so uh, let me wash my hands. Okay, so my hands are now nice and clean. This is how I've shaped my loaf. You can see the green peppers and the onions and everything like that. Um, and then I'm just going to um, kind of like frost it with ketchup. And I am gonna need some more ketchup, so that's gonna go on the list after I'm done. So there's that. And then take my spoon and just kind of, like I said, it's like frosting a cake. Frost it with the ketchup. And this is it. So I'll put this in the oven um, probably about an hour before we're ready to eat dinner. Probably about 400. I'll cover it initially with foil. Um, like I said, I am going to store it in the refrigerator until it's closer to dinner time. Um, but, uh, so I will not preheat my oven because otherwise my glass dish will break. Um, but I'll put it in the oven uh, for about an hour or an hour or so before we're ready to eat at about 400 and just kind of keep an eye. Um, you'll want to check it about 45 minutes into it or so. Um, maybe half an hour when you start to smell it. Um, and then, um, you'll want to take the cover off so it has some time to kind of, kind of not really crisp up, but yeah, so it's not covered the entire time. So that's my recipe for meatloaf. Um, like I said, I will be doing a video on potato soup later. So. so the meatloaf is in, it's almost done. It's been in at 400 for about an hour. And then those are um, honey balsamic roasted carrots that I have going. Um, I just chopped some carrots up um, yeah, so I chopped carrots up, I put them in a Ziploc bag, I sprinkled some thyme, some salt, some pepper, some olive oil, uh, about, um, a quarter of a cup, I guess, of honey, and, um, a couple splashes of balsamic vinegar, and then, uh, sealed it, shook it, and then put it on, um, my roasting pan to roast. So we're gonna have roasted honey balsamic carrots. And we're also going to have homemade mashed potatoes. Nothing beats um, homemade mashed potatoes, in my opinion, anyway. So I have my potatoes cooked. Um, I'm just going to give these a good mash. Sorry, I couldn't find my tripod. And I didn't want my dinner to get cold, so <laughs> I'm doing this one-handed. So I just give these a good mash while I'm doing it. I'm also going to toss in my butter. It's like two tablespoons of butter, I guess. Um, I'm going to add salt. And a little bit of pepper. Not too much. Okay, so I'm going to mash that in. I haven't had homemade mashed potatoes in a long time, but um, I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited about dinner tonight because it's like yummy comfort food, meat and potatoes kind of style of dinner. Okay, then I'm going to put this on my stand. I need to lock it in place, so bear with me. Okay. I am also going to pour my milk in. I don't really measure, so um, I never do when I make my mashed potatoes. Okay, hang on. Okay, put that in place and get my spatula. And we're going to go. Ready, go. Oh yeah, I love this thing because hands free and this is significantly less money 
It's my little Sunbeam hand mixer. I think I got it for my birthday. But it's significantly less money than um, a KitchenAid. And I don't really have a lot of space to store huge KitchenAid. This is much smaller. This is cool too because it actually detaches so I can use it as a hand mixer if I wanted to. So. This is going. Take my spatula out and I'm going to add more milk as it goes. We like our mashed potatoes to be creamy. And I'm going to suck her up. Alright, so the mashed potatoes are done. I'm going to give them, because any good cook tastes their food first before serving it, so let's try it out. Perfect. I'm going to add a little bit more salt, but that's pretty much it. So homemade mashed potatoes, um, you just peel the potatoes, however many potatoes you want, boil them until they're mushy, mash them, I add butter, milk, salt and pepper. Um, you can add whatever you want if you want other flavors. Um, then the meatloaf, look at that beast, oh yeah, and then my uh, honey balsamic carrots. So that's going to be dinner tonight, so thanks so much for joining me for cooking with Noe in this video, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!